So I'd ask everybody to take the seats, and I, I'm just so excited to see the amount of people here today. There's a lot of uh, chiefs from throughout the, uh, the Commonwealth here, and a lot of uh, police and fire personnel, and of course our dear friend Lieutenant Governor Polito. And I'm uh, just so excited to be here today uh, here in the city of Brockton. And if you've never been to City Hall, we welcome you with open arms. It's a beautiful building. Uh, I want to, of course, recognize the elected officials that are here before we actually begin the program. I want to recognize uh, State Senator Michael Brady. Senator, thank you so much for being here. I want to recognize Representative Jerry Cassie. Rep, thank you very, very much. We have the Council President, Jack Lally. Mr. President, thank you very much. Councilor, who I saw this morning over at the White Ribbon from Ward 7, Shirley Azak, Councilor, thank you. Councilor from Ward 2, Maria Tavares, and I, I know many of the chiefs uh, from Malden, a lot of the personnel from Malden actually just went to Rocky Marciano's house on Dover Street. So uh, welcome to the City of Champions, Malden friends. We also have Councilor Lodge Rita Mendez here today as well, and I, I do want to truly thank you all for uh, taking the time. Uh, we have uh, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, who you'll hear from just in a short while. Uh, City Clerk Timothy Cruz, Mr. Clerk, thank you very much for being here. And we have the Acting Chief, uh, Captain Steve Williamson from Brockton PD as well. Thank you for being here, Acting Chief. Uh, so my name is Bob Sullivan. I'm the Mayor of the City of Brockton, and I am just so, so excited to have Lieutenant Governor uh, back here in the confines of the City of Champions. The Baker Polito Administration have been nothing but friends to the City of Brockton. And today's a special day, even though we're hosting uh, we're recognizing many municipalities here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the Municipal Staffing Grant Award Ceremony is just something that's extremely, extremely beneficial uh, to here to the City of Brockton and a lot of other communities throughout the Commonwealth. But I do want to thank the Police Chiefs and Fire Chiefs who are here today. I want to uh, thank again uh, our dedicated uh, state delegation, uh, State Rep. Uh, Michelle Dubois could not join us today, but really without their efforts of, of working with the Baker Polito Administration on Beacon Hill, uh, and really fighting on behalf of all Brocktonians, we wouldn't be here. So I do want to thank uh, the Senate and Representative for everything they do every day. I want to welcome Secretary of Public Safety Terrence Reedy as well. Uh, he's got a little short story to share with you about the City of Champions, but I won't spoil it, although we did win that game. Um, and again, I, I saw Lieutenant Governor this morning at, at IKEA in the neighboring community of Stoughton for a white ribbon ceremony, and I said it then and I'll say it again. Karen Polito is not just an excellent public servant, but she's a great, great person and has done so much for all 100, 351 of the municipalities in the Commonwealth. And between her and Governor Baker, uh, I could just say thank you. Um, in terms of uh, what we're doing here in the city of Brockton, um, you know, since I took office January 6th of 2020 uh, until this, this day, the support from Lieutenant Governor and the Baker Polito administration is nothing but unwavering, uh, dedicated to the common core of, of helping, uh, and in this case, helping staffing for public safety. And as mayor of the City of Champions, where I was born and raised, we have almost 106,000 residents, and my main priority is to ensure the health and safety of every business owner and every resident that calls Brockton home. And I can't do it alone, and in terms of today's grant awards, which our Brockton Police or Brock Fire are uh, really generous beneficiaries of, um, we also have to take a moment to just publicly thank the brave men and women that serve and protect every single day, put their lives on the line. If we could give a round of applause. <laughs> they are there through good times and, of course, when tragedy strikes and when emergencies arise. Um, today, the City of Champions is receiving $525,000, over half a million dollars in municipal public safety staffing uh, grants. $275,000 is is for the Brockton Police Department, and $250,000, quarter of a million dollars, is to our wonderful fire department. It's just truly exceptional. And uh, these funds are crucial, and all of you that are here today know why they're crucial, because the recipients of the generosity of the grant opportunity allows uh, us as a municipality to maintain personnel in our emergency response teams, and that was no, uh, not clearer than during the COVID, where the brave men and women couldn't work remotely, where they needed to go out and be on the streets, and they needed to interact with sick people uh, because crime and emergency situations didn't subside during COVID. And in, in essence, we have an elite, dedicated staff of professionals, and I just want to say thank you for what you do every single day in the city of Brockton. Thank you what you do every single day in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now it is truly my honor and my privilege to welcome back Lieutenant Governor wonderful friend and a dedicated public servant and an exceptional Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito.
Uh, good afternoon. It's great to be back here in Brockton. I love coming to this room. Had a, had a lot of wonderful milestones met in this room with announcements and awards and, and just recognitions. It's, it's great. I want to thank the mayor for your leadership uh, over the course of your years of service, but especially over the course of these past couple of years. Uh, you have stood up stop the spread sites, vaccine clinics, all the things that we needed to help keep the people safe relative to COVID, and you've been an incredible partner to the governor and our entire team during those challenging times and every day. I want to thank you so much and your whole team, your City Hall team here. Uh, thank you for what you do every day, reporting to that office to serve the people of Brockton and this region. We appreciate your public service. I want to call out my colleagues, Senator Brady and Representative Cassidy. Thank you for what you do every day. Uh, this grant program today is an example of their advocacy for public safety starting maybe seven or eight years ago with a line item in a budget that now seven to eight years later, $32 million uh, in municipal staffing grants to our public safety teams across our Commonwealth. So thank you for your leadership. Uh, not only eight years ago, but all the way through, and of course with this upcoming budget to make sure that we're plugging in gaps and making sure that our communities get the support that they need to do their work. Uh, started off our day at IKEA in Stoughton. Uh, it was an unusual spot, but not a surprise uh, to the IKEA folks because they're an employer who has done a lot in the community uh, to support uh, programs to help youth live in a successful and safe manner. Uh, there was a great program marked by two young men graduating from Brockton High School. They were awesome. One of them has decided to go to UMass Boston and the other one is making a decision soon. But what struck me was their enthusiasm, their poise, they were all dressed for the role that they were playing today and they were wearing the white ribbon. This is White Ribbon Day. It's meant to message to men and boys how to exemplify respectful behavior in relationships and in community. And they stood up and said that this was important to them, that they have learned here the best practices and strategies around how to be a leader and how to exemplify those behaviors and that they were proud and honored to wear the white ribbon and understood their responsibility as young adults moving into the world soon bigger world uh, to understand what is respectful, what is right, what is wrong, what is toxic, what is healthy in a relationship. I can't applaud you more in this community when you see two young men embrace the values that we care about so much, uh, ready, ready to take it on. So you're doing a lot of great things here. Uh, Chief Williamson and Chief Nardelli, thank you. What I love about this program is you get police and fire working together. You know, there are some areas that you overlap in and certainly um, in the past couple of years you had to coordinate a lot of services to make sure you were meeting uh, the demand in the community. And I love that this grant program services both sides and helps you fill those gaps in terms of staffing. And in particular, I love this program because it's not a one size fits all approach between uh, departments uh, from one community to another. You have unique needs in each place and you can use these grants to fill that gap, service that need, design something uh, that really works for you. And just congratulations to you here in Brockton. Half a million dollars, no, no small change there, Mr. Mayor. And I know the departments will work well uh, to put those dollars to use. Before I acknowledge the other recipients, I want to give the Office of Grants and Research a big shout out. You've got Kevin Stanton in the back of the room. He is the master and every one of you knows that whoever does the grant writing in your communities, like give them a lot of, you know, dessert and snacks or whatever they need because they're the ones that are finding these grants and filling out the details of these applications. You have to compete for these dollars, and we appreciate these individuals. And Kevin, you have sought out and been able to gain resources from the feds and from a lot of other partners, and of course have put the dollars that the legislature has programmed into really good use. So congratulations uh, to all of you. It's been an honor for us over the past 
uh, seven plus years to be able to administer this program for and with you. So today we're announcing four and a half million dollars in funds. That's a big number and I'm going to come back up here to give out the actual envelopes at the end. You want, I want you to hear from uh, Terry Reedy and the legislators in a moment. But congratulations to the 10 communities receiving today. Brockton, uh, Fall River receiving a little over 1.2 uh, million dollars. You got Framingham, 113. Haverhill, 255. Lawrence, 995,000. Lowell, 262,000. Lynn, 494. Newton, 88. Malden, 400. And Somerville, 158,000. Congratulations to all of the communities. <laughs> And it's my pleasure to now turn it over to Secretary Terry Reedy. I can't wait to hear his story. I am the mother of a, a graduating senior from high school and have had opportunities to be over there uh, playing football, not me playing, but he playing football. You, you have tough competition here. You got uh, athletes that like to compete and they do it well and they do it respectfully. It's always been a, a, a pleasure coming here to the City of Champions for those kinds of games. Uh, and I'm sure that Terry has a few stories he probably wants to tell uh, today as well. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, uh, and, and thank you, Mayor, for hosting us today. And uh, I'm very honored to be here uh, uh, this afternoon. So here's my story when I was talking to the mayor coming in. I was talking about this warm weather we're having and uh, that I coach baseball in, uh, in, in Worcester at a high school and like we're having a tough time getting outside when it's 30 degrees out. And he asked me uh, where I've coached and I said I started out at St. John's of Shrewsbury. Oh, I used to play St. John's of Shrewsbury in football. I'm like, I did too. I used to play at St. John's of Shrewsbury. Um, so, and, and that's where the Lieutenant Governor's son, and she's being modest, is probably one of the best running backs in the state, plays at St. John's of Shrewsbury. Um, I played at Colby College, so I'm really disappointed. He's going to Bowdoin, and he's going to be pounding the ball against, Bo uh, against Colby for the next uh, four years. But so the, the lieutenant governor talked about her, her son playing Brockton High. Uh, that started when I was a freshman in high school uh, because my coaching staff had a strong connection to Brockton. My head coach was Tony Wood, who was a graduate of Brockton High School, uh, played at Duke, had a tryout with the Jets. And when he was younger, I uh, became the head coach at St. John's. And his father-in-law was Frank Saber. Frank Saber, an, another uh, son of, of Brockton who uh, played at Brockton, played at Holy Cross, um, and, and then went back and coached at Brockton. And then Coach Wood, when he became the head coach at St. John's, pulled him out of retirement and he became our offensive coordinator. And so I got to be very, very close with the Saber family and the Wood family. But here's the bad story about knowing the Woods and the Sabres and playing Brockton. So I'm a sophomore, it's uh, 1986, and uh, Brockton has Tommy Colombo as quarterback and Craig McMurtry as the wide receiver. And we're about to start the scrimmage, we start at the 20 yard line. And what happens, but a fly pattern to Craig McMurtry that goes for 80 yards, the very first play of the game, we're like, what, what just happened? Um, but over the years, we, we played every kept year, going kept, kept going, ah, it evened off at some point. Uh, but then I know when, when, when I was older playing, you had, and again, I, I don't want to make this all about sports, but th there's a connection to public safety and fire and, and, and police and being able to keep, keep community safe so kids can play football, play baseball, do extracurriculars. And you can't do that without police and fire. Um, but I remember playing as a junior and senior and they had uh, uh, Rudy, uh, Rudy Harris and Darnell Campbell who were probably bigger than most of our offensive and defensive linemen. So we had really, really great games. It started the season off for both schools, but there was a real strong connection between St. John's of Shrewsbury and Brockton High because of the Woods and because of the Sabres. Um, so I come have a lot of fond memories playing, some bad memories playing. Um, but what brings us to here today is the commitment of the Baker and Polito administration to, for public safety, supporting fire, supporting police, and where do you need most of that support? Financially. To be able to keep officers and firefighters safe, to be able to do the jobs that nobody else wants to do, especially in this day and age, to keep people safe in our communities. And if you don't have that, those resources, that funding, communities suffer. And since 2015, 
the Baker and Polito administration has dedicated $32 million to police and fire. That makes a difference in each of your departments, individually and collectively, and by extension, that keeps our community safe. Um, this year, as the, as the Lieutenant Governor indicated, there are uh, about four, four and a half million dollars going out to communities, uh, which will go right to the people who need it to keep officers and firefighters safe, to continue having them to continue to do the job that we all need them to do. Um, you can't do it alone. It has to be collaborative. I don't think Massachusetts, Massachusetts does it better than any other state in the country. I recognize I'm biased. Mm -hmm. But the level of communication, collaboration between police and fire, uh, between state police, our local, federal, and state partners is beyond comparison. Other states don't do this. And you can't do it without funding. And this funding is central to each of the, uh, the, the communities that are going to be receiving those grants today from the lieutenant governor. So in closing, I just want to uh, thank you all for being here today. I, uh, uh, every time I, uh, I have an opportunity to talk to law enforcement, it just goes without saying my gratitude, my personal gratitude, professionally, personally, of what you all do every day in this community that sometimes doesn't get highlighted. And sometimes it's a false narrative. But I think we all know in this room what you all do and the sacrifices not only you all do, but your families and your friends. So I thank you for, uh, for hearing me today. Um, I'm going to go back in my shell and forget that I came to Brockton and gave up so many touchdowns. Never mind, we didn't even talk about baseball. Um, but uh, thanks again, and I really appreciate being here. And with that, I'd like to introduce Acting Police Chief Williamson uh, to the podium. Thank you. Good afternoon. I just want to thank everybody for coming here. Uh, my name is Steve Williamson. I'm a captain with the Brockton Police. I'm currently serving as the acting chief. And I just want to take this time to thank the Lieutenant Governor, Public Safety Secretary, and the Executive Director for directing grant funds to the various communities throughout the Commonwealth. <clears throat> I've been the uh, budget manager for about 10 years. And I can tell you it's, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty delicate balance providing service and working within a budget. I know we all have to deal with it. Um, this funding will go a long way towards helping us maintain staffing levels <clears throat> and to provide additional service to the people of Brockton. On behalf of the police department, I want to say thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. To Secretary Reedy's point, um, I probably did play against you at St. John's of Shrewsbury, and don't for one second think the rest of us on the team looked at Don and Rudy as men among boys. So you weren't the only one at Shrewsbury. I remember going out there my sophomore year, and they said Shrewsbury, and that was like, you know, Kansas compared to being going from Brockton. So, yeah, I didn't know where I was going. So um, it, was, it was an interesting thing. So that's pretty awesome to hear. We all end up in different places, don't we? Um, so I want to thank everyone for being here today. This is um, monumental to have it right here in, in the city of Champions, right in this beautiful hall. <clears throat> we recognize this hall all the time. I was talking to some of my, my fellow chiefs. Um, I think we don't realize how beautiful it is, um, and we have an opportunity every day to spend time in this beautiful building. So thank you all for being here. Um, I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor, Governor Baker, I'd like to, and Lieutenant Governor Polito, the Secretary. I want to thank the um, Grants and Research Department. Thank you. I met some of them on the way in. We, we speak on the phone, but I haven't had an opportunity to put a name on the face, so that's wonderful. I'd also um, especially like to thank um, Deputy Chief uh, Scott Albanese, who um, is our main grant writer for the Brockton Fire Department. He, we talk on a regular basis about this, and he does great work in trying to find different places, and that comes to this grant. Um, one of the interesting things about this grant, other than equipment and other things that we bring in, this grant gives us the ability to provide services, to protect the public. And when we put this badge on, when we graduate from our various academies, whether you're the fire service or the police department, I think 
you, you start out with that idea of how can I serve the public the best. And that's what this grant is all about. And that's why when the secretary said about Massachusetts does it better than everybody, thank goodness, because this makes a big difference. In those lean times throughout the year, um, when times are a little bit more difficult budget-wise, like um, Acting Chief Williamson said, we're able to still protect the public and keep that same level of service. So thank you so much for all that you do for us in, in, in getting us those resources, because without them, um, things could be a lot more difficult. So thank you, Governor Polito, thank you. So I'm Jerry Cassidy, and uh, the city clerk and I can uh, talk all day about sports for, for Brockton here. You know, Timmy and I uh, graduated from Brockton High, and uh, sports really brings every, everybody uh, together. Uh, I know my good colleague, uh, John Lawn, uh, and uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito's uh, sons played against each other, right, at uh, CM. And uh, he says that your son is one of the best players that he's, he's ever seen, so... Uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the money, the five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and uh, you know I know Senator Brady and Rep. Dewar and I have worked very hard, and act actually our good colleague uh, Representative Cronin, you know who's now the ambassador to Ireland, she worked very hard on uh, getting this 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 done here. So I thank you, Governor Polito, Governor uh, Baker, and Polito have been nothing but class act for the city of Brockton, and we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and as a uh, good friend, Representative Cassidy mentioned, we have a great team at the state delegation. Uh, it was a great honor that Representative Claire Cronin, we, we, we're missing her here, but she, it's a great honor that she's now the ambassador to Ireland. But uh, we've all been big supporters of public safety, making sure these grants get funded fully, and we advocate for them every year. I was um, once the vice chairman of public safety in the House, and then when I got over the Senate, I became chairman of public service. But we, we appreciate all the work our police and firefighters do every day in, day in, day out, saving lives. They are the first responders. And I have to confess, I was, I, it's hard to believe now, but I was too skinny to get on the football team when I went to Brockton High. So I ran cross country. I was a lot thinner in those days, but um, I, I did know that Rudy and the other people you mentioned, Greg McMurtry went on to play for the Patriots. And, and also um, we had one of our great uh, leaders that went on to play for the 49ers, and uh, he's a dentist now, which is hard to imagine, because I went to a Hall of Fame one day at, with uh, Armin Colombo, and the guy's hands are so huge, it's hard to believe he works in somebody's mouth now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of the team of the state delegation. And again, thank you to the governor, lieutenant governor. You've been great here. You've always shown up in Brockton to support us. So God bless you, and I thank you for your years of service. Okay, Secretary Reedy's going to help me. All right. First one is Brockton Fire. Oh, we've got both Brockton Fire and I was going to say this is short change. Couldn't do one without the other. Brockton Police and Fire, please come forward. The next award is for Fall River. Don't even get me started about Durfee High School. Award is for the Framingham Police Department and Fire Department.
the Lowell Police Department. The Haverhill Police Department. The Malden Police Department. And our final award today is the Newton Police Department. Thank you all. Let me turn it back to the mayor. So again, I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Polito and, and Governor Baker and Secretary Reedy. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to share with you before you leave today, uh, the Strand Theater, uh, before 9-11, the loss of life in 1941, 13 firefighters perished. The movie theater was actually right outside here. And uh, until 9-11, it was the greatest loss of, of life for firefighters in the entire United States of America. So before you leave this beautiful building today, um, I want to recognize President um, Bill Hill from Local 144, the Firefighters Union. So we uh, here in the city of Brockton, history is extremely important, not just sports history, but history itself. And so every single year, we, we commemorate uh, those brave 13 and invite their family members. So before you leave and, and head back to your own municipalities today, if you want to just go outside, you'll see a wonderful, uh, right out here in the atrium, you'll see a wonderful uh, memorial statue. And um, the last time Governor Baker was here and, and the First Lady, they went out and looked at it. I know Lieutenant Governor has seen it many times, but I do uh, encourage everybody to please do that. Uh, in the back of this, uh, of this beautiful building as well, before you enter my office, is a piece of coal. And that piece of coal was harvested from Scranton, Pennsylvania, from the coal mine. Uh, when the Brave 13 were lost, the Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania Fire Department, in essence, adopted uh, the families of those 13. And so there's a piece of coal back there that was a gift in 1941 from Scranton Fire Department. And the family of the, the great-grandfather that actually carved it came here uh, for this year's memorial. So again, Brockton has been a first for many things, right? Thomas Edison came and the first electrified fire station in the nation is here. First electrified movie theater, first electrified street light, the first department store, Santa Claus, a guy named James Edgar was from Brockton, uh, the oldest candy company. We beat Hershey, Pennsylvania, Washburn Candy, the old ribbon candy that we got at the holiday here in Brockton. So uh, we're the city of champions for Hagler and Marciano and McAfee and all the likes and Brady and Cassidy and Dubois and Cronin. But I do just want to say really that the true champions are the brave men and women that wear that badge and that go out every day. And, you know, we pray for them every day that they'll go home safely to their families, but they don't always do that. And that's just unfortunately... Uh, what's in their fabric, that's their calling. So I do want to thank Lieutenant Governor again for giving all the municipalities this wonderful gift of money, this grant money in the Commonwealth. And many of your own mayors will be here tomorrow. I'm hosting uh, 22 mayors for the MMA conference. So uh, Ruth Ann Fuller from Newton and uh, a lot of the mayors will be here tomorrow. So I do just want to say thank you for what you do every day in the Commonwealth and your own municipalities. Thank you again, Lieutenant Governor. God bless each and every one of you and God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.